The Sonoran Desert, which spans the border between northern Mexico and the United States, is a harsh environment. But at least it usually rains in the summer. The animals that live here have to be highly adapted to survive. They include this, the desert tortoise. And the cactus wren. Many, like the ground squirrel, are active only during the cooler parts of the day, retiring to their burrows to avoid the intense heat. Reptiles like the rosy boa are particularly well suited to desert life. Their scaly skin helps them to preserve valuable moisture. The long-nosed snake is harmless, but its coloration may deter predators as it hunts for lizards among the rocks. The rattlesnake certainly is highly venomous. Its venom is designed to kill the rodents and the other small mammals that it preys on. It shares its desert home with one of the only two species of lizard in the world with a venomous bite. It is a primitive reptile, heavy-bodied and slow-moving, but its bright coloration is a warning to all that this is the Gila monster. At almost two feet in length, the Gila monster is the largest lizard in the United States. Its head is thick and powerful, its eyes quite small. The tail is used as a fat store in times of plenty, and unlike that of most other lizards, it cannot be shed when danger threatens. Its claws are strong and sharp, not for climbing, but for digging in the baked desert soil. Like most reptiles, the Gila monster's tongue is forked and very sensitive. It is used to track down the essentials in life, such as a mate and food and water. Water is very important to a Gila monster because its skin is poorly adapted for a desert reptile. In fact, it leaks like a sieve, so whenever water is available, the lizard drinks avidly while soaking it up like a sponge through its skin. The lizard's skull reveals it to be the owner of a battery of large, sharp teeth. The Gila monster's poison glands, unlike a snake's, are in its lower jaws, and the venom trickles along grooves in the teeth and into the wound. Its skull is also covered in bony plates called osteoderms that give it extra strength and protection. But the Gila monster's venom does not seem to have evolved for dispatching prey. Its jaws and teeth alone can do that. Unusually for a reptile, the venom causes instant, intense pain, although it's rarely fatal to humans. It seems to be a highly effective anti-predator device for those animals which ignore the lizard's warning coloration. The Gila monster's prey consists mainly of reptiles and small mammals. In this case, the luckless victim is a whiptail lizard. Although the lizard tries to escape by throwing off its tail, the venom has already taken effect, and it is dead within minutes. First its tail, and then its body, are swallowed whole. When the Gila monster was first described around the middle of the last century, no one was really sure whether it was venomous or not. So it was given the scientific name of Heloderma suspectum. 
When it was decided that it was venomous, the fallacy persisted for many years that its venom was a result of the lizard having no anus. And so all the toxic waste products of its digestive system had to be expelled through its mouth. This was, of course, complete nonsense, although few people in those days were brave enough to examine the creature too closely. Because of its lack of agility, most of the Gila monster's mammalian prey tend to be the young in the nest. Here they're the pups of a wood rat. But the lizard's favorite food, and the easiest to obtain, are eggs. They are always eaten, shell and all. Late spring and early summer marks a burst of activity in the Sonoran Desert. Temperatures are gently rising, promoting greater activity among the wildlife. Plants are still green and in blossom before the long, hot summer turns their leaves dry and brittle and a uniform brown in color. Butterflies make the most of their short-lived source of nectar. During the early morning and the late afternoon, the desert tortoise emerges from its deep, cool burrow to feed. It will eat almost any vegetable matter. Even the driest shoots provided with sufficient nourishment. But it will only spend short periods out in the sun. After a few minutes, it heads for the nearest shade. The ground squirrel also avoids the intense heat. And its activity closely matches that of the tortoise. It rarely ventures far from its burrow in search of seeds and insects. Hawks, coyotes, bobcats, and many other animals prey on ground squirrels. The cactus wren invariably chooses the prickliest locations for its nest. A chola cactus is ideal. Few predators could reach the nest here, and its contents are certainly safe from the egg-loving Gila monster. It is during late spring that these venomous lizards emerge from their underground retreats, where they have passed the colder winter months. They have been living on their reserves, and their bodies and tails are now thin and wasted.
An adult Gila monster has very few natural enemies, but early in the year, many crawl out onto roads and highways in order to warm up more quickly on the artificial surface. It is an act that often proves fatal. It is now as the reptiles reach their peak of activity and have started to lay down reserves in the form of fat that mating takes place. The male, the two sexes are virtually indistinguishable, lies above his mate with his forelimbs over her back. During copulation, which may last up to an hour, he occasionally rubs his chin against her back. In a few weeks' time, she will lay between two and ten large white eggs in an underground chamber. They will take around ten months to hatch, so the appearance of the young lizards coincides with the more favorable conditions of spring. The Gila monster really is quite poorly adapted to desert life. It only survives here in Sonora because of the desert summer rainstorms. Its close relative, the world's only other venomous lizard, lives much further south, deep within Mexico's humid subtropical forests and grassland. It was probably under these conditions that the heloderms evolved, which would account for the Gila monster's leaky skin that is so poorly adapted for desert life. The seasons here are governed by rainfall and not by temperature, and the other wildlife is much more exotic. The groove-billed Arni feeds its young. It is a member of the cuckoo family, but it doesn't leave the rearing of its young to other species of birds. Large grasshoppers are on the menu today. In spite of its size, the insect is easily swallowed by the chick. Beneath them, on the forest floor, a pair of tamanduas are busy ripping open a termite nest. These anteaters spend a lot of time in trees, descending to sniff out ant and termite nests, which they tear apart with strong claws. A vine snake slips almost unnoticed through the branches. Its camouflage is very effective. Its body may reach four feet in length, and yet it is not much thicker than a pencil. It even sways like the branches that it mimics, so as not to be seen by its lizard prey. But this lizard is not on the menu. The Mexican beaded lizard is the Gila monster's closest cousin, but at a length of almost three feet, it is much bigger. A large part of this, however, is tail, which doesn't play such an important role in the storage of fat. Beaded lizards are very variable in color. This one is a uniform brown with just a few patches of yellow showing through. They are enough to persuade any would-be predator that it is not a creature to be meddled with. Apart from their tail and coloration, they are almost identical to the desert-dwelling Gila monsters, 
In every respect, they too have venom that causes instant intense pain, a fact known when they were first officially described. The beaded lizard is known to scientists as Heloderma horridum. In some parts of Mexico, men still test their reactions by swiping their hand through the open mouth of a beaded lizard, otherwise known as El Escorpion. It's usually after a great deal of tequila has been drunk. Deaths due to lizard bites, if any, usually occur during these contests. While some Mexicans were busy testing their manhood, others were discovering more about Mexico's wildlife. In 1950, beaded lizards were discovered living high up on an extinct volcano in Chiapas, the southernmost and most tropical of Mexico's provinces. The strange thing was, they were completely black. Black beaded lizards are only known from two or three locations in this part of the country. Apart from their coloration, they differ from the normal race in that they are very solidly built and regularly enter water. Strangely, though, this black variety starts off life with exactly the same coloration and pattern as the normal type. But as the lizard grows, it darkens, and by the time it is almost full size, at six or seven years of age, it becomes completely black. It differs, too, in that while all its relatives usually lead a more or less solitary life, the black beaded lizard is often found in small groups. Exactly why it is completely black remains a mystery, but it is interesting that many populations of lizards elsewhere in the world, separated from the rest of the population, are often black, or melanistic. The black beaded lizard high up in its volcanic crater has been isolated in exactly the same way from the rest of the brightly marked population. All beaded lizards share the Gila monster's love of eggs. One quick swallow, and it doesn't even crack the shell.
The helmeted iguanid goes to great pains to ensure that its eggs are not discovered and eaten. The black-beaded lizards usually live in a warren of underground tunnels and caverns, which they excavate with their powerful limbs among the tree roots. When they are not active, their burrows can be identified by the pieces of shed skin. And the tracks left by their tails. In the trap house, where the adults have no known predators, these slow-moving lizards can reach a ripe old age of 20 or even 30 years. But today, there is a new threat, one that can even reach the lizard inside its burrow. The crater, like much of the surrounding countryside, is being cleared to create farmland. And the lizard is not just losing its habitat, it is facing a much more direct physical threat. The burning scrub fills the burrows with thick choking smoke and many of the reptiles die of asphyxiation. Those that do survive emerge into a hostile world with no cover and no food. When the dinosaur was disappearing from the face of the earth, the beaded lizard was already well established in its subtropical home. Now it seems, with the help of man, one of the world's most remarkable lizards may well follow its gigantic cousin into extinction. <laughs> 